Hey everybody, it's Martha from Discovery Fabrics and today we're going to talk about how to make the warmest mitt ever, 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 ever. This is my favorite mitt and we have a blog coming out where I talk a whole lot about my favorite mitt. Why is this my favorite mitt? Because it has never let me down. Even at minus 40 in the Yukon when I was outside all day, every day, this mitt is the bomb. You can't buy this mitt anymore. So what can you do to make yourself a super, super warm pair of mitts? First of all, the basic pattern itself probably doesn't matter much because there's a few little tweaks we might be doing. So if you have a mitten pattern that you love, start there and then I'll talk about a few things that we can do to make it even warmer. So the first thing I love about this mitt is how long this gauntlet is. It goes almost to my elbow. You may look like a six-year-old in a preschool class, but who cares? It's gonna make your hands even warmer. The reason why this adds so much warmth is because you're building up another layer of protection and you, every time you overlap layers of insulation, meaning your base layer, your mid layer, your jacket, and now your mitt gauntlet, you're trapping air between all those layers and that helps keep your hands even warmer. Also, this gauntlet is really quite wide. So it fit over my biggest, poofiest, parka that I had, which believe me was really big and poofy, but it has a really simple um, shock cord and cord lock that I can close that up. So I'm not going to get drafts or loose snow going down there. The wrist area is also quite roomy. So they put in this little, again, one handed um, cincher with some webbing and a glider. It's attached with a little bit of elastic on the cuff there. So I can cinch down my wrist area. So I've got a nice long and wide gauntlet. I've got an area in my wrist that's nice and wide so it's not uncomfortable. I have an Apple Watch on in here and it's not squished at all. Then going into the hand area, the hand area is roomy enough that my fingers can move around in there without being constricted at all, but it's not so big and giant that I'm trying to heat up a bunch of empty space. So my fingertips come right pretty much to the end. I, there isn't a whole lot of empty floppy stuff there, which is really great. Um, it also has a slight anatomical curve. So they've put little darts here that help that kind of bend around. The reason why I like that a lot is it reduces hand fatigue. So if you're wearing your mitts outside and you're hanging onto a shovel or handlebars or ski poles, anything where you have to grip for a long time, if, you, if you're fighting that curve all the time, your hands get tired and it's not comfortable. The other thing going along with that curve is the insulation on the palm is thinner than the insulation on the back side of the mitt. So we'll break that down. On the back side of the mitt, it's hard for me to tell exactly how thick it is, but it is super, super poofy. And the key bit of information I have about what's in there is this little tag. That little tag says Primaloft. We carry Primaloft. Primaloft comes in a bunch of different styles and a bunch of different weights, so I don't know exactly what's in here and I'm not gonna cut them open to find out, but here's some Primaloft. And I'm pretty sure, this is Primaloft Gold 100 I just pulled because I had a nice small piece of it. In here, there, it's so thick that it's not a single layer, even of um, Primaloft 200, it's more than that in there. So you can fold your insulation and create something even thicker. So there's four layers of Primaloft 100 right there. And I feel like that's getting kind of close. So, you know, go ahead and experiment with that. Stuff up this side of your mitt, put in those nice little darts so it curves nicely, and that's gonna give you a lot of extra warmth. Having multiple layers folded together, again, we're getting air trapped in each layer and we're getting air trapped between the layers. So you get kind of an exponential amount of warmth. That's not very scientific, I don't think, but trust me, it works. So that's the insulation. Then I talked about the palm is a little thinner and that's so that I can grip and not get hand fatigue, but it feels denser. And so I'm not sure if they've used um, Primaloft on the inside there, or if they've got something denser, like maybe even a, a 200 weight fleece plus Primaloft or something in there to give it um, a thick barrier, like a thick dense barrier without a thick barrier is what I'm trying to say because you also don't want the cold air to easily transfer from your cold handlebar through to your hand. So you need to have enough in there to block that, if that makes sense. So that's talking about kind of overall construction of the mitt. We've talked a little bit about the insulation and layering up on the backside. Now let's talk about 
the fabrics for the outer and the inner. The other thing I really like about this particular mitt is on the inside of the gauntlet, this part, they've kept it like a nylon. So this is gonna slide really easily over my jacket. So it's not gonna get bunched up at all. And then where my hand is, I can unfold it that much. This is a super thin fleece. I don't exactly know what kind of fleece, but here I pulled out our Polar Tech fleece lining. I think that would be a really good example for a fabric to use on the inside. It's not too thick, nice and fleecy against your skin. Um, I also pulled out Polar Tech Power Dry Midweight, and I pulled this one out because in the blog, it's the one example I give of not using a fleece for your liner or your the mid hand part of your liner. And the reason why I'm suggesting this one is is it is nice and soft against your skin, so it's gonna feel nice when you stick your hand in there, but it's also Polar Tech's sort of premier moisture wicking fast drying fabric. And you want whatever is inside here to dry quickly. It is also the run reason why, and I know I might get some flack on this, but I have not put any power wool as a recommended liner because the wool fibers in the power wool are gonna absorb some moisture and they're gonna take longer to dry. If you've got a boot dryer or a mitt dryer, one of those things where you can shove your mitt on it and it blows warm air, go ahead and use wool because you can dry it out. But if you're camping or something where you don't have a heat source to get in there, the wool is gonna hang on to the moisture. So I've only given fleece and the power dry, which are all polyester as examples for inside for that purpose. So then on the outside of the mitt, this one looks like it has a really super fine ripstop. So the, your outer fabric has to be weatherproof. It needs to repel snow, repel wet snow, and be windproof. So I just pulled out one particular style of Neo Shell with Stretch that we have. It's Storm Gray 66831. I pulled this one simply because it's also a mini ripstop, but in the blog I've linked to all of our technical um, laminate fabrics that you could use. So basically there's no wrong answer. Pick the color you like. So the one final thing I have for keeping hands warm that has nothing to do with this particular mitt is this other little fancy garment here. And this is an example of one of the things I wore in the Yukon all winter long. And we called them wristlets and we had a friend make us a bunch. So wristlets are designed to keep your wrist warm. The reason why it's really important to keep your wrist warm is that your wrist has no protection. There's no natural insulation there. And you can see in my bulging veins that the blood vessels run really close to the surface. So it's extremely sensitive to the cold. Your wrists, your armpits, the back of your knees, those are all areas on um, your neck where heat loss can happen really quickly. And if your brain senses that your wrists are getting cold, it stops sending warm blood down to your hands. As soon as you don't have good circulation, your hands are going to chill even faster, even if I'm wearing this. So by putting on a wristlet, you're giving yourself absolute protection on your wrist. Your other layers are gonna slide on top, then your jacket, then this. So I've added an extra layer. Wristlets should be relatively close fitting, but not constricting, because we don't wanna restrict our blood flow again. And these are made out of a fabric that's slippery on the outside, again, so that my layers are gonna slide over easily and not get bunched up. And then the magic about this particular design is the pocket right here. So we put this pocket here to put in one of the chemical hand warmer packs. So now I have heat right on my wrist. By keeping the pack out of the palm of my hand, it's a little more comfortable. I can still do what I need to do and I'm not trying to hang on to this bunched up chemical pack, but we slid them in there. So at you know minus bazillion, putting these on, plus a good layering system, plus eating well, <laughs> making sure your inner furnace is going, is definitely gonna keep your hands warm. But for those of you that ask, you know, how can I make the warmest pair of mitts possible? Consider some of the features that I've talked about here and that are also outlined in our blog. Thanks very much for watching. And if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to ask them in our Facebook group, So Inspired by Discovery Fabrics. And this video will be on YouTube and on all our social media channels. Thanks again.